Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Mystery Object Answer video on our own devices. I'm Jean Massier, and yesterday I showed you this object, which I said was used for performing a medical procedure, which shares its name with a classic comedy film. Now, hopefully most of you guessed that this was used to perform lumbar punctures, a.k.a. spinal taps. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. Specifically, this is a Fleischer spinal manometer, which is used for measuring the pressure of the cerebrospinal fluid. So cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, is a watery liquid that fills the ventricles of the brain, the subarachnoid space in the meninges, and the central canal of the spinal cord. And the easiest way of accessing the CSF for diagnostic purposes is via lumbar puncture or spinal tap, that is, inserting a needle into the spinal canal. And this is done for a number of different reasons. For example, to collect a sample of the cerebral spinal fluid in order to test it for bacteria, viruses, white cell count, glucose levels, and other possible indicators of infection or other disease. Lumbar puncture can also be used to relieve high intracranial pressure, such as from a head injury or infection, or in this case, to measure said intracranial pressure. Now, the former use of lumbar puncture was pioneered by English physician Dr. Walter Winter in 1891, and the latter use that same year by German physiologist Heinrich Finke. For a while, lumbar puncture was also used in the rather painful procedure of pneumoencephalography, in which the cerebrospinal fluid was replaced with air to create greater contrast while taking x-rays of the brain. Anyway, let's actually have a closer look at this unit and how it works. So the Fleischer Spinal Manometer comes in this lovely nickel-plated steel case that hinges shut for storage. And unfortunately, this particular example is missing quite a few components. So originally, there would have been a lumbar puncture needle held in these brackets and connected by a rubber hose to a fluid trap that would have been held in this bracket. And this prevented any cerebral spinal fluid that came through the hose from actually entering the mercury manometer. Now, the pressure would be transferred to this mercury reservoir here, which is connected to our manometer column here, which is graduated in millimeters of mercury. And if I tip that over, you can see that this thing has plenty of mercury still left in it. Now, the top of the manometer column is actually open to the air, though it's protected by a little mesh screen and a disc of felt to prevent mercury from leaking out of the unit while in storage. And what this means is that this measures what's known as gauge pressure, which is pressure relative to atmosphere, as opposed to absolute pressure, which is pressure relative to a vacuum. Now, as the name suggests, the Fleischer spinal manometer was invented by one Andrew W. Fleischer, who is an important, if all but forgotten, figure in the history of medical instruments. So Fleischer was born in 1882 in Racine, Wisconsin. He apprenticed as a pharmacist before obtaining his pharmacology degree in 1903, and opening his first pharmacy in 1910. Now, his original plan was to buy up failing or decrepit pharmacies and create his own chain, but as he interacted more and more with physicians, he realized there was a lot of money to be made in improved medical instruments. So in 1913, he patented a design for a binaural stethoscope and a sphygmomanometer, i.e. a blood pressure monitor, that formed the basis for the modern instruments we still use today. He later formed the Physician Specialty Company in Chicago in order to sell his designs, and in 1921, patented this spinal manometer. That same year, his company was bought out by Becton Dickinson, or BD, of Rutherford, New Jersey, which had been founded in 1897 in New York City by Maxwell Becton and Farley Dickinson. Now, Becton Dickinson is a fascinating company in its own right, having introduced many now standard medical devices, such as the lure lock for syringes, the first dedicated insulin syringe, and the evacutainer evacuated test tube used for drawing blood samples. Now, following the merger, Fleischer became the director of research and development for Becton Dickinson for 60 years, finally retiring in 1974. He died a little less than a decade later in 1983 at the age of 101. Meanwhile, the Fleischer spinal manometer continued to be produced until the 1970s, when it was finally replaced by more advanced continuous monitoring technology. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time in another episode where we'll look at yet more medical equipment and other fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day. Manometer. Manometer. Manometer.